Hey, what's up? I'm Paul Gray and I play for Slipknot. Um, I'm here to teach you a couple songs. Uh, the first song will be Duality off our last album, Slipknot Versus, Volume 3. And then uh, after that, I'll teach you Surfacing off our uh, self-titled album. Uh, but first, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, let's see here. I started playing guitar uh, first. I know I wasn't a bass player at first. I, I played guitar. Um, I started playing when I was like 12, I think, I believe 12, 13 years old. Uh, I have an older brother, Jay. Uh, he, you know, was always into music. He was a big music guy. Uh, always cranking out like Black Sabbath and Leonard Skinner and, you know, Zeppelin and The Doors and um, The Stones and The Beatles and, and bands like that, Alice Cooper. And I, I Kiss, I was a really big Kiss fan. I used to dress up like, like Gene Simmons or Ace Frehley, depending on what year, uh, you know, every year. <laughs> But um, yeah, like I, I was always into music. Um, I was in sixth grade. I got a, the first Suicidal Tendencies record. After that, I, you know, I was really wanting to play. And I actually had a friend who uh, had a guitar. Then, um, you know, I got to like noodle around on it, but it was right-handed and I was always left-handed. And I was like, I never knew what I was doing. No one ever showed me. So I would just kind of noodle around upside down. And then, uh, let's see, I went and actually I saw Slayer on the Hello Waits album and uh, that, that changed my world. I was like, I gotta get a real guitar and actually do it, you know, uh, seeing like, you know, them up there, the, the red lights and the smoke and just, it was all evil and I, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So, um, yeah, I, I begged my mom for a guitar uh, and she finally got me one. Uh, it was a, it was an actually badass guitar. It was a Gibson Flying V. It was left-handed it, it, it ruled. Uh, I never took lessons or anything. I, I was always self-taught, you know, just like uh, listening to, to albums and just trying to figure stuff off of that. Um, that guitar, I had that thing for a while and I ended up like, I moved around a lot when I was a kid. You know, it was like uh, between Los Angeles, I was born out here in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, I, I moved out to the desert for a while and uh, was hanging out with some friends and I didn't live with my family anymore. I kind of did my own thing. and. Uh, so I ended up having to leave my guitar with, my, with one of my so-called friends and he ended up trading my left-handed Flying V, Gibson Flying V, for an eight ball of speed. So <laughs> that went that. Uh, but, you know, it, it took me a while, but I ended up getting another one. And middle round, played, and, uh, you know, just kept jamming. <laughs> I had an apartment, uh, my first apartment when I was 16, uh, and uh, me and, me and uh, my friend Frank, man, we would, we would like noodle around playing all the time, uh, and my other friend Chris, and we kind of, you know, we started our own little band uh, <laughs> called, called Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, which was like, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we would uh, jam, do like uh, dancing songs and stuff like that in, in our living room. Uh, you know, I was 16 years old. Uh, or actually, by this time I was like 17. I was sick of, you know, having to struggle every month, um, you know, on my own. And I called my mom up and she had moved to Iowa. And so I asked her if I could come and sleep on the couch out there. So I moved to Iowa. And uh, <clears throat> that's where I met the guys who eventually uh, would become Slipknot. <laughs> Well, a funny story how I, how I got to playing bass is uh, you know, I played guitar when I moved to Iowa and I didn't have any friends, uh, didn't know anybody. Um, I went up to the local like music store that was right, right around my house and uh, I went in and I started talking to those guys. And I overheard this guy talking about needing a bass player uh, for their band and they did covers and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the, the, the bands that they said they covered, they did like Slayer and uh, Metallica songs, stuff like that. And uh, so like not knowing anybody and, uh, you know, just wanting to meet people, I, you know, told them, you know, I could play bass, even though I never played a bass in my life. Um, and I didn't ha own a bass, you know, and I had no money to buy a bass, but I told them I could play bass and that I would uh, come and rehearse with them. And um, one of my brother's friends had a, a weird right handed bass, which I strung left handed and uh, used this little practice amp. And I went down there and, you know, I, I played with them uh, and I didn't actually know any of the, the bass lines or anything like that but I knew all the guitar parts so I just faked it and played all the guitar parts so uh, 
that's how I got to play in bass. You know, they, they, uh, they thought it was cool. And, uh, I got in there and got comfortable and kind of took that band over and kicked a bunch of people out. <laughs> and, uh, the guy actually I met was the original lead singer for Slipknot, uh, down there. And he played drums at that time. Um, but, uh, yeah, me and him became friends and, uh, we had gone through a couple of different bands uh, at that time. We like that first band broke up and we started another band, a death metal band called Body Pit, um, where actually some of the riffs from surfacing came from. Uh, and, uh, you yeah, know, we did that and that's where we, we would do shows together. And that's where I met like Joey and uh, Sean, um, you know, and Jim. Jim actually had the, uh, the big ass, kick ass band in Des Moines, uh, Atomic Opera. They were like a, like a full on, like kind of Flossum and Jetsum kind of band, but they, they were badass. And then Joey had another band called Modifidius. Sean had a band called Heads on the Wall. And, uh, you know, and I had this band Body Pit. We would do shows together. And uh, that's how we all met. And we kind of, you know, uh, became friends, man, you know, and just jamming at different shows. We'd be the only bands there. Like, and like a few like kids that would show up for the all ages shows on, on Sundays at the uh, runway. Uh, before it burned down and uh yeah so we we just jammed did shows became friends and uh later on when uh, all those other bands broke up um you know i talked to to sean and uh and andy and uh you know we decided we'd start a new band because sean and andy were both drummers you know they wanted to do you know something with with a lot of drums and percussion and uh, when we first started, Sean actually played the kit, the sit down kit, and Andy played percussion. Sean kind of wanted to move to percussion and do like a more of a, a different thing. So, um, you know, I had always been friends with Joey. So, uh, you know, we decided to uh, give Joey a call. Joey came out and he heard the stuff and he just loved it, man. And so he was in and that was kind of like the start of Slipknot. <laughs> We had a old guitar player, uh, Josh, who was in that first band that I joined. Uh, you know, we got, a, we got Mick in there. I tried a couple other different people and different lineup arrangements, but we ended up getting Mick and, and, um, and we ended up getting Corey. After we, we, did, a, we did a first demo and, um, with our old singer. And, uh, you know, we'd always known Corey from his other bands. Uh, and, you know, he was a pretty obnoxious dude, but, you know, he could really sing. We, we actually did a battle of bands with, uh, against them, and, and, like, we won. We whooped their ass. <laughs> but Corey, I mean, you know, he has a great voice. And so we, uh, we, we were doing, demoing some new songs for a new demo, and uh, we asked him to come out to sing. Uh, he sang on a couple of songs. Uh, and after that, you know, we knew we had to have him in the band. So we had Andy, our original singer, who also played percussion. You know, we, he kind of did for like a show kind of sing back up and and uh play percussion but he just i don't know wasn't happy not i don't think being the lead singer anymore so he he left and that was fine we ended up getting chris 